what's going on on YouTube? Today I'm excited to come back to you with our new series for electrical basics videos and talk to you about the basics of meters. So multimeters have changed quite a bit. Let me begin by telling you what a multimeter is. A multimeter is simply a, a small meter that generally measures voltage, resistance, and current. Now I've got a, a bunch of meters here to show you as we go through this. So I want to start with this. So as I said, meters have come a long way. This is actually called a Simpson meter. Uh, this was an analog meter that you can see you have a base plate here uh, with mirror for to get rid of what we call parallax so you don't have a false reading based on where you see your meter needle at. But these were pretty confusing. Um, and there are still technicians today that prefer these analog type meters. Uh, Simpson meters were very well known at the time for being uh, almost the standard for multimeters uh, several years ago. But as I mentioned, we've progressed through this a lot. Now, this is the meter that we're gonna be using in a lot of our videos, tutorial videos uh, for the, this series. I chose this meter because number one, we're using low DC voltage. Uh, and so these are, adequate for what we are doing and they're low cost. So you don't have to spend a bunch of money to understand circuits as if you decide to go through these labs with us. Uh, this meter comes with some, some great meter leads, um, some alligator clips that we'll talk about in a minute, but, uh, and it also came with a couple other things like some uh, electrical tape. I'm not sure why that is. But again, I only suggest these for low voltage um, hobby type of activities. If you are in industry or if you are uh, maybe measuring higher voltages at your house or whatever the case may be, I am a big proponent of Fluke and Fluke did not sponsor this video, but I'm a big proponent of Fluke because Fluke nowadays is like the Simpson meters were years ago. You just know you've got a high quality meter when you have a Fluke. There are other great meters out there. Uh, so there's uh, companies like uh, Greenleaf. Um, there, there are several other meter companies that, that are great. The one thing you need to uh, make sure that you have is on the back of your meter, make sure it has a UL certification because that guarantees you that this is, these meters have been tested. Because here's the thing about multimeters. Multimeters can actually save your life. Uh, especially if you're out in industry. And so that's why it's so important to have a, a meter that you know meets certain standards. This fluke meter is actually a special meter used especially in automation engineering and technician level. This is called a process meter. We'll get into the specifics of this meter in future videos when we start talking about control systems. But to give you an idea of why I'm using this meter in our videos instead of my fluke, is because this Fluke is about $800 compared to this meter, which is under $20. So that's the reason we'll be using that. Now there are many other types of meters besides these four that I have for this video, but I just want to show you some of the basics of this. This is another special type of meter. Um, you can see it's got a clamp on it, and this is actually called a clamp-on meter. And so the advantage of this is when you measure a current, generally you have to break a circuit. And we'll be going over that in future videos. But with this meter, you can actually get, put your clamp around a wire to measure the current with the system running and not break a circuit. It actually picks up induction, and this is actually a coil to read your current. So there's a lot of different types of meters for different applications. Generally, electricians, uh, HVAC technicians, people like that will use these a lot, although they're handy for anybody. Now, let, let's get into some of the basics. So we'll start with the meter that we're gonna be using. One of the most confusing parts of using a multimeter is where to place your leads. And if you look at the bottom here, and I'll zoom in on this, you have your first lead here on my left that says volts, resistance, and milliamps. And so this is a little different, and I'll show you that with the fluke. But as long as you're reading milliamps, current, volts, or resistance, that's where you're going to put your red or your positive lead. That's where you're going to place that. Now, these meters have a plug at the end. You have to remove this plug. But you simply just place those in that first slot if you're going to read those. 
Now, this is your common, and so you can place your negative lead in the common, and it stays there all the time. If you get the 10 amps, you need to move this lead from the left-hand side, which is milliamps, to the right-hand side, which says 10 amps DC. So if you're measuring high, higher amperages, you need to move it here. Everything we're going to be doing in these videos, you can keep your lead on this left side over here. Next, we have a, a really uh, handy thing that I want to talk about. This is a continuity tester and a diode tester. Uh, we won't get into diodes until later on, but you can test the diode with this next option. But it also, it looks like a, an audible symbol because what you can do is that you can put it on your continuity tester. And by the way, you have these little caps that prevent you from getting poked because these are very sharp. But if I want to check to see if something has connection, I don't know if you can hear that or not. I'll show you on the fluke and show you the difference here. So let's just, let's do the same thing on our fluke real quick. Our fluke has the same option here, a continuity tester. The fluke is a little more complicated because you have to actually choose the audible. But now when I choose continuity or test continuity for my fluke, make sure my meter lead's in the right spot, you can hear that beep. That tells me I have a connection. We're going to be using this option in the next video when we start talking about breadboards and show you how you can use this. This is a great troubleshooting tool, an excellent troubleshooting tool. So getting back to our meter that we're using for these videos, you can continue on to resistance to 200 ohms all the way up to 2 mega ohms. And so we're going to be using these a lot when we start talking about resistors. And then finally you get into volts DC. You also have a backlight button which turns the light on obviously and a hold button. And so if you're measuring a voltage that's kind of jumping around, you can hit your hold button and it'll hold the value so you can, you can measure it at that point. Now let's talk about some very important rules when it comes to meters. If you're using a meter in industry, before you check voltage on your meter, you need to check it to a live source. And so what you need to do is take your meter leads if you have an outlet that you know is actually live or hot, you can take your meter leads, put it in the outlet, read 120 volts to make sure that you have, that, that you don't have a blown fuse in your meter. Because think about this, if I did not test that on a known source and I am working on, let's say, a three phase uh, 480 volt system and I take my meter and read across that to determine if that voltage is live or not, and it's reading zero because I might have an issue with my, my meter leads or, or a fuse blown. And so that's the reason you always check this with a live source first. See that 120 volts that you know that it's live. Check your 480 volts or whatever you're checking and then always go back and check your live source again. This seems like overkill, but again, these meters can save your life. And that's a perfect example of safe practices with meters. One other thing that's really handy that Fluke other do is they have these alligator clips that actually plug into your, the end of your meter leads. And so if I have a, a dangling wire, I can actually connect this alligator clip to the end of my wire and it, would, it will hold it in place for me. And so those alligator clips are very handy. That's the reason that I suggest that these cheaper alligator clips for our videos. So finally, I want to go back and revisit one thing I talked about at the very beginning in more detail. One thing you have to be extremely careful about, and again, this goes back to um, measuring a known source first, you need to be sure that your meter leads are in the right position. Students will forget to move the meter lead from current to voltage because in this fluke, you actually have to move the red lead from your volts and resistance over to this place here, which measures current. So this measures DC milliamp current. And if you have AC current, you have to actually move it over here. It's always good practice. The first thing to do is look at your meter leads before you measure a voltage or current in a circuit or whatever you're measuring. Okay, so I hope this has helped you today. Again, this is just the beginning 
of talking about multimeters, but I just wanted to introduce you to mul the multimeters and talk about the specific multimeter that we'll be using for these videos. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And again, I want to especially thank the National Fluid Power Association for sponsoring these videos and helping us with the equipment that we're using to create these videos. Thank you and have a great day.